Good morning and welcome to Love Every Moment, coming to you today from Glen, New Hampshire. Well, today we're going to do three verses, Matthew 5, 33, 34, and 35. And it says, Again, you have heard that the ancients were told, You shall not make false vows, but shall fulfill your vows to the Lord. But I say to you, make no oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is the footstool of his feet, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. So, making vows. The first thing I'd like to just point out that notice that this part about making vows comes right after the part about divorce and remarriage which also comes right after the part of lust. So I think there is a progression here, but as I've said before, I believe the entire Sermon on the Mount is uh, related by love, that love is the key issue uh, behind the entire Sermon on the Mount. But let's get to this. The whole idea, of course, is that we say what we mean and mean what we say, that we're not lying. And he goes beyond, don't just lie, you don't even need to swear by God or anything else. And of course, when I say swear, I'm not talking about cussing. I'm talking about invoking God or the Bible or something like that. Now, I've mentioned before that I love to watch those police shows where they have uh, cameras following policemen around like live PD and cops and so forth. And it's interesting when they pull someone over and if the person who is pulled over starts to say, I swear to God, anything. I swear to God I wasn't speeding. I swear to, on a stack of Bibles. I swear on my dead mother's life, which doesn't even compute to me, but there you go. Once they say, I swear to God, you pretty much know that they're full of it, that they really are not truthful, and they're hoping that invoking the phrase, I swear to God, is going to make them sound truthful. The truth is, if they just say the truth matter-of-factly, no, officer, I didn't realize that I left my black tank valve open. Uh, if they say the truth uh, very matter-of-factly, they, they seem to be a lot more believable. So, how do we live a life where what we say really is what we mean, and people get to know us as a person of our word without having to say any oaths. Well, there's a couple of things. First of all, obviously tell the truth. Second of all, don't say, I swear to God, or any other swearing. But the third one is not here, but is in other parts of the Bible. Let's look at James 5.16. And just the first phrase says, therefore, Confess your sins to one another. Now, when we say confess our sins to one another, that's not always easy. Of course, you know, we can confess our sins before God. He's our loving Father. He is a lot more gentle with us in some ways. If we confess our sins before men, well, we might get an earful of it. But, that aside, uh, I found that if I not only confess my sins, my errors, my faults before men, but even do so without being asked. For example, yes, that was me who took the last donut. Or uh, if my boss comes to me and says, or asks people, who did this? Well, if, I, if it was me, I'll say that right away. It does several things. Number one, it cleanses my soul, to be honest, and get that off of my chest right away. Number two, I'm more representative of God because God is a God of truth. But number three, if people hear that I am willing to always show that, yes, I was wrong about this and, and own up to my faults and errors and sins, then when I do say the truth, uh, no, I didn't do this then people are a lot more likely to believe me. So, uh, the love that we have for God, that He can even have my pride, makes that crow taste a lot better. <laughs> because if we love every moment, we're going to love every moment. I'm your average wretch, and I hope you have a good week.